love this man's work from The Sopranos, also from Goodfellas, the new movie, The Wannabe, in theaters near you, December 4th, a movie with Patricia Arquette and Vincent Piazza, who was fantastic in Boardwalk Empire as well, executive produced by Martin Scorsese and Dean Devlin. Michael Imperioli, great to see you oh, here. Oh, thanks, man. Uh, thanks in person me. on this show. I am a huge fan of, of yours. Thank you. And, and, and the work that you have done. Uh, which one do you get the most when you get a, when when you get you're out and about? The Sopranos or Goodfellas? Oh, The Sopranos by far. By yeah. far. Yeah, I guess because I had more of a you know presence in it because sure. it lasted so long, and maybe because it's more recent. Although Goodfellas seems like it's on TV like every day. I might on some I, I remote drop. Michael, <laughs> no matter what, you know, it drives my wife a little crazy. It's just like, I'm sorry, you know, we're just 20 minutes in, but there's another two hours I gotta sit there I and know, watch. it's one of those movies. With that, and uh, before we do then, get to The Sopranos and, and your movie. So, how did you get involved with Goodfellas? How did you get in that mix? Goodfellas was, let's see, it was 1989. Mm -hmm. um, I had just started working with an agent, and you know, they said, well, you can audition for this Martin Scorsese movie, and I met the casting, woman, mm -hmm. um, and she's Ellen Lewis, who's mm -hmm. great casting woman. She said, um, okay, c come back and meet Marty. And I was just like, you know, I mean, Italian kid in New York, actor, you know, Martin Scorsese was. He's the man. That's yeah, the man. I mean, he still is. I mean, but then at that point in my life, it was a huge kind of thing. So I'm like, okay. And I knew with the book he was doing, it was called Wise Guy, actually, the book that. Yeah, the Nick book, right. right. Um, but they weren't giving out the script. So all the actors, I think, auditioned with the same scene. It was one of Pesci's character's scenes. Mm -hmm. So in my delusional state back then, I thought I was auditioning for that character. I guess Pesci's we all did. Okay. Yeah, I guess we all did. Uh -huh. um, but in the audition, you know, with, with Marty, he, I remember him, he... he I knew he liked improvisation, so I just started improvising in the audition and just doing whatever. I think it was the scene, I don't remember exactly. I think it was the scene with Spider, but I was auditioning, at, I was reading Tommy's lines. Something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, But I knew he liked improvisation, so I made a point of doing a lot of improvising, and he was laughing, and and then they called and said I got the part. And then you're, suddenly you are now acting in a scene with De Niro and, yeah. and Pesci. Yeah, yeah. What was that like with, with Scorsese behind the camera? What in the world was that like? It's kind of like getting called up from single A team to play with the Yankees in the World Series, basically. <laughs> it kind of is that. It really is. And how know? did you have your wits about you in the, in the scene, right? I mean, you're a professional, obviously, but. Well, yeah, I had been. I had done some plays and a little bit of movie work, but I had studied for a long time. I mean, basically what I did was, what, what, what freed me was Marty said to me, listen, treat the other actors as the character on and off camera, which really made it a lot easier because now I didn't have to be this kind of actor, you know, intimidated by these legends and, you know, and, and just kind of, do my job. Because they did the same thing? De Niro and Pesci were in character too? And not, really not, are, not so, uh, Pesci wasn't acting like a psychopath. No, he <laughs> was actually very kind, you know? That would have been really rough. Yeah, I was about to say. Um, no, he, he was cool, but, um, so what I did was, I, I told the prop guy, I said, let me reset the props mm -hmm. in between the takes on the poker table. So if there's drinks, I'll reset the drinks. Uh, uh, if there's, you know, dirty ashtrays and that, which they let me do, and they let me set up the, the little bar where I was making drinks, they kind of let me set that up how I wanted to mm -hmm. so I can watch them while I'm making drinks. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember before we started rehearsing, because we spent like the whole morning just rehearsing, which, you know, is, a lot of movies, you don't you, you spend the morning shooting. You know, you just sure. come in and shoot. You don't rehearse much. But so the first thing I did, De Niro got to the set before we started rehearsing. I went up to him and I said, uh, "What do you want to drink, Jimmy?" And he went, <laughs> "He gave me the De Niro look." And he went, uh, "Give me a shot of scotch and a club soda." I was like, "Okay." Like he kind of wasn't sure. And then he was like, "All right." Then he told me what he wanted, and I brought it over. And then from then on, it was smooth. And know? then they were very kind. I mean. De Niro and 
Ray Liotta and Joe Pesci. Did were... you have any idea at the time that you were making something iconic, part of something iconic? Did you have any idea? I knew, I mean, just because I'm with these guys, sure. it was iconic. You know, doing a mob movie mm -hmm. with Martin Scorsese and Robert mm -hmm. De Niro was iconic in itself. I mean, you never know how the movie's going to be received. I mean, I right. certainly didn't anticipate, you know, the kind of historic thing that it become, but you knew, you know it. There is potential for that with those of course, guys. Sure, sure. Yeah. I'm here with Michael Imperioli, the wannabe, which we'll discuss, I promise, here on the Rich Eisen Show. I'm just going to continue fanboying you for a little bit <clears throat> on these, on this and, and The Sopranos. Um, the movie poster that I have here that mm. I showed you in the commercial break that Ray Liotta broke my heart. He broke my heart, to use a godfather phrase. Um, said that it, it's not his autograph. Seeing the other autographs that you, have, that you saw up there, knowing the guys as you do, is it all fake? Is it all fake in your, um, in your you professional know, I opinion? I don't know. I mean, it what could be. It, the other ones could be real. I mean, uh, obviously, Ray would know his signature, uh, but I think there's, I think it. Yeah, you just Now that? it's kind of even worth even more because of the story, because Ray broke it with the hammer, <laughs> and he, re, he crossed out what he thinks is the Fugazi, and he signed it for real, and it's been talked about on TV. It's way more valuable than it ever was. No? So I should f at least take heart in that. I think it's so uh, unique and has its own history it's it's gone beyond what you even what yeah. you even originally bought it for we're showing the video right there this is ray when he was here he took the hammer to it yeah there he is now it's its it, own it, it, okay so it, now it's its own thing it's 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 unique and one of a kind have you ever seen something that you've signed and wondered whether that was something that you yeah really i signed? saw a couple of fake things online fake i think pictures or posters or something what's the matter with people what is the matter? It's such with an people? easy thing to do, right? It's too too easy to fake. So what's the best thing it. you've you've been asked to sign? Sopranos or Goodfellas or anything related from your career? Uh, some casts, <laughs> which like is always broken fun. arms and yeah. stuff like that. Broken legs. So he's kind of that's pretty intimate if you don't know somebody. Right? <laughs> about um, to say, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, let's take a break here. We're back uh, with Michael Imperioli. We're back in just sixty ticks of the clock. The Wannabe, December fourth. Uh, in theaters and video on demand. We're back with more here on The Rich Eisen Show. Welcome back to The Rich Eisen Show. Michael Imperioli here in person on The Rich Eisen Show. So you're from New York. Does that make you a Yankee fan, a Met fan? Is it when I was uh, born and raised about 15 minutes from Yankee Stadium. The Bronx. The first game I went to, I was three, mm -hmm. and it was Mickey Mantle Day. It was 1969. It was the year he, he retired the year before. Mm -hmm. In the beginning of the new season in 69, they had a big celebration and retired his number and all that stuff. And my father scalped tickets and brought me. Um, and I have still very vague recollections of being there. As a three-year-old? As a three-year-old, In Yankee yeah. Stadium. I have a pennant that mm -hmm. uh, my father bought me from that day. We still have it. The, that from 1969, yeah. Mickey Mantle Day. Yeah, it's that's, pretty cool. That's old school stuff. I've got Michael Imperioli here on The Rich Eisen Show. Uh, the Sopranos, uh, I can throw out so many different episodes, but the one that leaps out to me, long-term parking, mm. may be the best hour ever. Yeah, and you in one. it, truly remarkable. I'm wondering if, if that is, is that your... Favorite one? I'm just throwing that out there. If you could choose personally, uh, you know, for for my work, that probably, yeah, because it was, um, it's one of those moments where you realize that you know, it doesn't really get any worse. You know, it's like it's a moment where that anything you really do as an actor, that scene can hold it, right? Because it's such an extreme when you learn. She's in bed with the feds, you know, and his whole world, as he know, is crumbling and everything's gone. And it was um, just such a rich moment and episode, really, to play as an actor. Yeah. yeah. And, and that scene that you played with Adriana, right? Yeah. And, and where you basically learned that she is your yeah. worst nightmare. Yeah. And it's now either her or your lifestyle, her or Tony, I, I'm wondering what that was like when you finished that scene. Yeah. Were you, you spent? Because it looked like yeah. you put it all out there. Yeah, that, that, that's exactly it. You know, it was one of those scenes where, you know, you can, you can put as much as you can and as much as you want into this, and, you know, and the, the scene will hold that, mm -hmm. you know? It won't seem like it's not... You can't really do too much in a scene like that. Right. Because it's so big. It's such a, you know, traumatic... 
uh, you know, revelation. Um, so it was, it was really exciting to do that. Andrea, um, I just loved acting with her. We had such a good time and she's, she's a great actress and a really mm -hmm. great acting partner, you know, so, so to be able to do that with her was special. What was it like working with James Gandolfini? Oh like? man. He's yeah. a big Jet fan, huge. He's a jet, jet fan, yeah, me too, I'm a Jet fan. That's cool. But um, Jim was just a great, uh, I acted with Jim more than I've acted with any other actor, probably more than I ever will act with any other actor, I mean, in terms of screen time. Sure. And I would not have it any other way. I mean, he just uh, always gave everything. and never took any moment or any scene, however, maybe inconsequential it seemed on paper, whatever, never took anything for granted. I think, he kept everybody on their toes that way. Uh, always gave it all. And pushed himself to go really far. And one of the main reasons why the show is what it is. Mm -hmm. you know? Do you think Tony Soprano lived or died? Where do you stand I on think that he, I think he, uh, I think he died, but David, I think might have, David Chase might have said he didn't. I mean, that's just my opinion and interpretation. I have no inside that knowledge. That he got whacked in that diner. You believe that? Yeah, but that's just... That's just my opinion. I think David, I, I forget what he, recently he might have said something that he doesn't die or he's not sure, but yeah, I, I, I mean, the end, ending has been very talked about, you know, mm -hmm. often and, and controversial, but I, I always thought it was an um, appropriate way to end that show. I think anything very, anything really concrete would have been out of character for the show because David Chase didn't like to wrap things up and tidy little knots and bows and stuff, you know, everything had a very open-ended, mm -hmm. amb ambiguous kind of quality, which, which I think is more interesting in a way. Yeah, I had a, a big viewing party like most Americans, most everybody, a big, huge viewing party. I had about 20 people yeah. in my house. And when it ended and it went dark, they all looked at me thinking that I didn't pay my bill. They thought like, what happened? Did the lights go out? We were all just, and then the credits go like 30 seconds later and we were, the conversation started immediately. We about were all together, actually. The, all the guys and Lorraine, and I think maybe Jamie Lynn. We were in Hollywood at the Hard Rock. We had done an, uh, like kind of an, a big appearance there uh -huh. at, and a viewing party. And then we, we went into a room. It was airtime, Sunday night, when it really aired. And we went into a private room to watch it. None of us had seen it. Nobody had seen it yet. No. We, we all watched it together for the first time. Did you not know how it was going to end at all? I had an inkling, because I remember David mentioning something about everything going to black like a year before. But I didn't really know <laughs> what he meant. Uh-huh. You're <laughs> right. So we were watching it. And, you know, it's getting close to an hour. So you know that it's ending. And then the song came on. And I'm looking at the guys, and it was... You know, it was very, it was very emotional because I'm like, this is the end of a lot of things because this is, the, you know, this is the end of, you know, ten years. It was really a ten year span that we collaborated and spent all this time together, and you know, that it, it went beyond just the show and became about the, our relationship as actors and as friends sure. and stuff. So it was a really big moment, and then it went to black, and we were all, some of us were more shocked than others, but we were all kind of, you know, what did Gandolfini think? I don't, you know, I think he was surprised, but thought it was pretty interesting, you know? Yeah. But um, it was a very emotional um, night, you know, and just being together and sharing that. I'm sure. Let's talk about The Wannabe. Michael Imperioli is here uh, on The Rich Eisen Show. It's a fascinating film with a, an interesting setup where uh, it's a story about a, a man in, in the 90s of New York City mm -hmm. who's obsessed with the mafia, right. right? Played by Vincent Piazza, who was spectacular in yeah, Boardwalk Empire. He's a great Empire, actor, yeah. Right, yeah, he, played, uh, he played Lucky Luciano in Boardwalk mm -hmm. Empire. And, and he tries to fix the Gotti trial. Is that essentially what? what? He tries to, he, he, he wants to get, ingratiate himself and get in with the uh, Gambino the, family. The wannabe. He wants he's to, the wannabe. Uh -huh. And so he kind of comes up with this crazy scheme to tamper with a member of the jury, thinking that if he does that, and you know, sways, and that guy sways the jury to not convict John Gotti, that he'll become a made member of the Gambino family. And um, how's that work out for him? 
Well, you can imagine how that works out. For but that, that yeah. part of the story is not true. The, there is a component that is true with this character where um, this kid and this older woman that he has this relationship with, they went on this Bonnie and Clyde crime spree where they were robbing card games in mafia social clubs mm -hmm. in New York City and buying drugs with it and buying fur coats and video cameras or whatever, you know, was popular at the time. And eventually, you know, got caught and, uh, and but he was obsessed, this kid in real life was obsessed with the mob and movies and gangsters and eventually they got caught and executed. And you play his older brother in this film. I play his older brother who in kind of took over the family business, which was uh, this flower shop in um, Queens that uh, I think we shot it in Brooklyn, but that um, it's been in the family for years and mm -hmm. it's a fixture in the neighborhood. And uh, I'm the older brother who's, you know, knows what kind of, uh, you know, what kind of problems his younger brother. And he's trying to always give him advice and keep him out of trouble, but he's kind of keeping an arm's length as sure. well because it's he's kind of a constant failure in a lot of ways. Patricia Arquette is in this film as well. Um, and you're just shooting a new, uh, just finished shooting for Amazon Mad Dogs. What's Mad this about? Dogs What's this is a about? new series. I I kind of describe it as the Hangover meets Deliverance. Oh my gosh, um, that's but that's not quite accurate. But it's kind of fun to say that. Oh, yes. um, <laughs> my mind is running wild yeah, right now. It's yeah, the it's it's about four middle-aged guys who are kind of underachieving middle-aged guys, not quite satisfied with where they've gotten in life. And mm -hmm. their fifth friend, they're all college buddies, invites them down to Belize where this fifth friend played by Billy Zane has struck it rich and is living in this huge villa. And he invites us down for a weekend, a guy's weekend. Mm -hmm. And weird stuff starts happening where we start to see maybe he isn't who he says he was, this guy, and maybe he's involved in some dark, you know, illegal stuff and the rest of the season is, uh, is these ordinary guys in very extraordinary circumstances in a very foreign place and trying to figure out, you know, how to survive and how to get out of there. And that's coming to Amazon. Uh, in January. So in, in January. And then the wannabe in theaters on, uh, on the 4th of December. Uh, this is a thrill for me. I, I really oh. appreciate you coming in here. Yeah, it's Michael. Fun. Thank you very much. Uh, you bet. Michael Imperioli here Thanks, on The Rich man. Eisen Show. Thank you for coming on. We are back with more in a moment. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern, on Audience.